This is a video explaining global winds, including polar easterlies, trade winds, and westerlies. Please watch the climate zones video first before watching this video. It will help you understand global winds a little better if you understand climate zones. I've attached a similar sheet to this, a Google sheet, if you want to print it out and draw with me as I go through global winds. A few things I already have labeled. I've got lines of latitude labeled, zero degrees, 30 degrees north and south, 60 degrees north and south, 90 degrees north and south. I have our climate zones labeled, tropical, temperate, and polar. For climate zones, remember tropical gets direct sunlight shining straight on, so it's quite warm there. The polar climate zones, the light's coming in and hitting more at an angle because of the curvature of the earth. So our polar climate zones are going to be very cold because of that. So the earth is warm in the middle and cold at the top and bottom. Because of that difference in temperature across our planet, we have wind. So the cold North and South Pole have, they are an area of high pressure. Cold air has high pressure. The atoms aren't moving around as much and they're putting more pressure on one another. So you have a high pressure area here and a high pressure area at the South Pole. At the equator, the sunlight's hitting straight on and it causes the air there to be very warm and the molecules speed up and they're moving really fast. That creates an area of low pressure because the atoms are not pushing on each other very much. I'm gonna go ahead and label equator. So you have high pressure here. It's kind of like squeezing a ketchup bottle. So the wind is going from high pressure, trying to fill in the emptiness, the empty space created in this low pressure area. So the wind from the North and South Pole is trying to make it south to the equator. But because the Earth is spinning and the air is warming up on its journey, we've got a little bit, it's a little bit more complicated than just rushing towards the equator. So I'm going to try to explain that through this video. Let's start at the top. So air at the North Pole is heavy, or I'm saying it's heavy, it has high pressure. Let's say it has high pressure. And so it is sinking and it is rushing towards south, towards the equator. When it gets to about 60 degrees north, when the air gets there, it warms up a good bit and it begins to rise. And then it fills in this empty space that was created from the sinking air. So you get a convection cell there because of this warming as the air is on its journey south. Same thing down here for the southern hemisphere. The air is sinking down, it's cold, it's moving south to fill in this empty space. And as it gets to about 60 degrees south, it warms up and it fills back in like that. So you get another convection cell down here. I'll move that up a little bit so you can see it. All right, so that is kind of like showing you the lower elevation or altitude air and higher altitude air, what's going on, like if you think of it as a three-dimensional Earth, okay? Now, moving on to, let's do the tropical zones next because they're a little bit easier to understand than our temperate climate zones. So, at the tropical climate zones, air is really hot and hot air rises. And some of that air is going to move this way and some is going to move that way. When the air gets to about 30 degrees south and north, it is cooler there. So the air will sink and fall like that. So you get some convection currents around the equator. Now let's go to the temperate climate zones. The temperate climate zones are going to be influenced by their friends near to them. So they are influenced by the cold air at the North and South Pole and the warm air at the equator. Since this air is falling right here, it pulls in the air with it in the temperate climate zone. This air is rising, so it influences the air near it, and you get a convection current like that. If you take a look up here, we're going counterclockwise and counterclockwise. The temperate climate zone is the oddball. He's going clockwise, okay? So same for the southern hemisphere. This air is sinking, so it pulls, it pulls this air with it. And that is our convection cell for the Southern Hemisphere Temperate Climate Zones. This one is going clockwise, clockwise, 
and temper it, we're going counterclockwise. These convection currents throughout the earth cause deserts and rainforest to be spread out across our earth. This hot air rises right here from the heat from the sun. And when the air rises, it carries moisture with it. And when that moisture gets higher up in the atmosphere, it cools, condenses, and falls back down as rain. So if you look on the equator, like through Ecuador and South America, past the ocean into Africa and Asia, you'll notice a lot of green. And those are rainforests. Since the air lost its moisture here, the air leaving is very dry. So when you get to about 30 degrees in north and south, that air is so dry that there's not much rain there and it causes bands of deserts. So I'm gonna write that in. If you go through on the map looking at the United States and Mexico, across the ocean into the northern part of Africa, you'll notice desert areas all along 30 degrees north. Same for 30 degrees south. That air is very dry there. 60 degrees north, you'll notice hot air rising again, and you actually get another band of forests. They're not rainforests, but there are forests there. And same for 60 degrees south. There's not much land on 60 degrees south, but the land that is there is forested. So you've got a pattern, forest, desert, forest, desert, forest. So what do you think's here? It's not really desert like the Sahara, but it's an ice desert. Not much snow there and a whole lot of ice. So that area, even though it looks like it's just snowing there all the time, it's an ice desert going in with our pattern. So I'm gonna write ice desert up here. So our planet has bands, latitudinal banding, because of the unequal heating of the Earth. So looking at a map, ignoring the ocean, you'll see desert, forest, desert, forest, desert, forest, desert. Super cool. Okay, now let's talk about the wind in each climate zone, getting back to our main topic. So in the polar climate zone, air is rushing from the North Pole to the equator, and it's actually going to not go straight south because the earth is spinning and the earth is spinning faster at the equator than it is at the top at the north pole the equator is much wider than it is at the north and south pole so it has to cover a larger distance in the same amount of time so when the air is leaving in the northern hemisphere it actually gets turned like this So if you were that air going like this, you actually like got to think about it. You're getting turned to the right. Air in the northern hemisphere turns to the right. So if you're headed like my pen is, you get turned to the right. And these winds are known as polar easterlies. Because they are going from east to west. I'm going to mark east on here. Oops. East and west because we always, we generally talk about winds for, or name them from the direction in which they come from. So they're going from the east and they're headed west. In the southern hemisphere, the rotation, the faster rotation of the earth at the equator, this is called the Coriolis effect, it causes wind to get turned to the left. So imagine your wind trying to make it to the equator, you get turned to the left, turned to the left. Think about it like you're coming this way and you get turned to the left. And those are also known as polar easterlies. Lots of patterns here. Look for them. It'll make your life easier. And they're cool nature patterns. Polar easterlies. Now let's talk about the equator. And tropical climate zones. We've got air rushing in towards the equator. Remember, these are our surface level wind airflow. And they get turned in certain directions depending on which hemisphere. So in the northern hemisphere, they get turned to the right. So they're headed this way and they get turned to the right like that. You gotta think about it. you're coming in this way and you get turned to the right. In the Southern hemisphere, they get turned to the left. The wind does. And these are the prevailing winds of the tropical climate zone and they are known as trade winds. 
They are called trade winds because they brought people from Africa and Europe to North America and South America. You could take, if you're on a boat with a sail, you could um, use those currents to get you to North and South America. Unless you get stuck at the equator, that rising air creates very little wind and it's really calm in this area. This area is known as the doldrums in the ocean and ships would get stuck there. Same thing at 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. All right, last global wind are our westerlies. So there are the oddballs again. They're moving north and they're moving south, okay? So in the northern hemisphere, they get turned to the right. In the southern hemisphere, they get turned to the left. I always have to think about that. I was never good with my right to the left. So it's like you're going that way and you get turned to the left. And these are known as westerlies because they are coming from the west and they're going east. In the United States, westerlies are going to make the weather go from the west coast, like from the west side to the east side. Westerlies um, are very influential in our weather patterns in the United States. Trade winds will carry hurricanes from off the coast of Africa all the way to North and South America. So they're going this direction. Westerlies are also going to take warm air um, from the southern part, like not really the southern United States, but even further south all the way to Europe. So those are some global winds that we have. We've got polar easterlies, westerlies, and trade winds. You also have some nature patterns formed from them. Ice desert, forest, desert, forest, desert, forest, ice desert. So look at a map of Earth. Look at all the different colors. See where you have greens and tans and greens and white. And you will know that it is because of the uneven heating of the Earth and our rotation. Nice job.